Hello, welcome back to Fish Locker. Today we're um, we're out in Texas, and, uh, out, out, out creek fishing. Now you can see behind me it's it's not a massive creek. It's just really in an area of drainage. And all I'm doing is I'm using my uh, flat and warbird travel rod and uh, a little abo spinning reel. And all I've done is I've just rigged some floats. Got a float rigged with about two and a half foot depth. And I'm just going to push this little stretch here. Now you can see behind me here, the current's running down here. We've got a shallow part and then we've got like, like a dead water pool there. So the current's running tight underneath me. And it's like undercut these roots. And it's slack water there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trot the bait down. I mean by that, if you cast it, you just let the bait run through. Let it run through the swim. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm near a road, so it get a little noisy at times and what I'm looking for is either the floats bob straight into the water as the floats drifting down I'm either going to wait for it to stop or to bob straight under There are some little tiny fish. There are some little tiny fish that I'm expecting to catch. But, uh, sunfish, long haired sunfish, red breasted sunfish. Now the water is slightly undercut where I am. So I'm hoping that the fish just hiding down there. Why I'm trotting it to pull up through. I don't know why it is, there wasn't, wasn't a car around when I turned up. Now I've seen found the busiest road in Texas. Now all I've done is I've got some little size 6 bait holder books. Just using the words. Pretty little channel cat. Cracking looking little fish, aren't they? See the float bobbing. See, I've cast it into that, that slack body of water just out of the way of the current because I think that's where the fish will hold up. I was getting little tiny trembling bites. I was casting the float over, the float was just bobbing. I was just taking my worms and I just couldn't figure out what it was. I think I found out what it was. <laughs> little tiny catfish, you cheeky little thing there. Thank you. 
<laughs> Another cheeky little channel cat. Cheeky little fella, isn't he? Like I said, the best way to hold these is like that. Because there's a spike on here and a spike on there. So if you're going to hold them from the top, you need to get hold of them from above and flatten their spikes down. Or just hold them underneath. We're after his great granddad. There are quite a few logs and things in the water down here. I'm going to shorten the hook length to try and drift the float through there. Because I think there might be catfish in the lake hiding in the, in the logs and logs. Found it eventually. And it is a little tiny sunfish. Now it just looks like, to me, this looks like a long-eared sunfish. Now it could be a dollar sunfish or it could be a bluegill. But at the moment I'm just going to call it a sunfish until I've had a chance of checking. Usually you can get them to like the size of your palm. This is, this is a little one. But uh, I'm glad to catch him. Really pretty little guy, isn't he? Getting back. Well, the reason I'm using a float is a good ledger fish all this time. Not only is a float a great way of showing bite in the fish, but I can move the bait around a lot and it drifts in the, in the current. It suspends it up in the water, whereas a ledger bait is only in one place. Not only that, I've tried ledgering before and there's a lot of crayfish around here. See that there? A lovely little freshwater drum. They're gorgeous little guys, aren't they? These are all spikes. It's got a big spike on the little fin. You go see, look, just taken on the bottom hook of my two hook float rig. It's just using worms. Now, all I've done is I've just picked him. Um, this is actually like a park, and there's a bridge across here. And underneath, where you maybe can't see are uh, like <laughs> just concrete tubes where the river at the back the little creek runs underneath the bridge so there's current running through there and through here and there's like a dead bit of water just here in front of me and literally all i did was i just dropped it down there now the water clarity is terrible it's uh, inches but the, the fish still seem to be able to find the bait. Now, um, areas like this in the middle, in the middle of the, uh, the creek, I'm expecting to find like your catfish or your drum. And I'm going to try little areas like these tree roots in a minute with a shallower float to see if I can find, um, find some bluegills. You might see every now and again, there's quite a lot of turtles and terrapins in this area. You see a lot of bubbles forming and every, every now and again it will just come to the surface and take a breath and go back down again. I like fishing with the float in this instance because it gives you the chance to, to search out a bit of ground as a bite again. And quite often, if you cast in and what's called trot your float, the current will eventually take your bait to 
to where food source is naturally deposited. Fish know where these areas are, so where I cast it there and it's drifted through. The bait will drift through in the currents until it finds a spot where it will sit. And that's where bait will naturally accumulate or fish find these areas. This is a little slack area of current. So what will happen is the fish will hold up here and let the current flow past on the sides and wait until something comes past the road. What I did when I got here first is um, I just tied a weight to the end of my line. I just dipped it in areas to find out roughly how deep it is. See how my float's walking away there? Right, the float hasn't bobbed down, but it started moving away quite quickly. Which is often a sign that a fish has actually picked it up. And I don't see. I checked the depth, which is called plumbing, to know how deep to set my float. So in areas, just in this area in here, my float is actually too long. So my bait is sat on the bottom. Whereas the areas in front of each of these tubes, is, uh, it's deeper than the depth of my bait. So my float will drift. That's the problem about having baits on the bottom. Little crayfish. That beauty. A cracking freshwater drum. You can see that bite there. It was um, very tentative. It was just plucking at it, plucking at it. And I just had to let it develop. Yeah, that hook's just falling straight out. Stunning looking fish, these. Freshwater drum. I don't know if you can see the area behind me here. This is what I'm looking for. You can see how the current comes down and runs un under this corner here. That means that the water's going to be faster, isn't it? You can just as see an alligator gar just in the water there, look. You just come up to the surface real slowly. Take a breath and then go back down again. It's about two foot long. Anyway, current comes in here. So the water will be faster and it'll be deeper here than over there. Now just behind where that little branch sticks out there will be like a slack water eddy. Now fish can hold up in there and if you see down here just below me where all these roots are fish will hold up behind there as well so what I'm hoping to do is I'll just stick a float in just up there and let it trot down and then maybe Put one over the other side, you can just as see another alligator guy there surfacing. A little bit further down here, you can see some broken rocks. Now catfish were living there. You see the alligator guy in the middle? Catfish will live inside them rocks. So we'll maybe try and put a bait down there as well. Again, another cracking freshwater drum. See, look, taking a worm just on it. See where he's taking a worm? Corner of his mouth. Got some little tiny teeth. Lovely colours on them. And they do scrap. Easy. Oh, it's covered in slime. A 
Oh, it went with a strong hook hold. <laughs> Slightly sandy, fresh water drum. That was just doing exactly what I'd said. I just, just cast it a little bit up current and just trotted it back. And it was just down here next to this stump. There does seem to be quite a lot of them drum. I've ex I was expecting more catfish. But it seems to be that the drum are the predominant species in Long Island. Try to drift it. Try to drift it past the stump and I've hooked into the stump. I've just caught another tiny, <laughs> absolutely tiny sunfish. Now, I don't know what it is, could be, could be a green sunfish. Do some research and let you know. Just like I said, come down to near where the rocks are because I thought that it might be the type of area thought that these rocks might be the type of area that would hold the catfish. Just drifted the worm down through the rocks. And I've got myself a chunky little channel cat. Now he's there. Uh, Half decent size, it'll be about three pound. Now, look, no cracking fish. Just spot this down, show you them a little bit more. See, look, they've got a spike on there, and as I showed you with the smaller ones. A spike on each of these dorsals. They've got quite a large anal fin and a big broad tail which gives them which gives them a lot of a lot of power in the water. See he's, he's rubbed me all up I'm all covered in slime now. Yeah, let's get him unhooked, get him back. Brilliant little catfish isn't he? All these little whiskers. And you're seeing, look, I've gone straight into one of them crevices around these rocks. I knew that these rocks would hold catfish. It's just like, it's like anything else. They, they want somewhere safe to hide. And it's a perfect ambush point because you can see the, the current just running right past. You hide in one of these crevices nice and, nice and safe. And as soon as, it come, as soon as something comes past in the current, straight out on it. Let's see if we can bait up and see if we can find another one. Hey, Ali. All I've done is I'm just using a nice fat juicy lobworm. Oh yeah. One of the things I will say is you need to be quite careful when you're on areas like this, especially like, like broken rocks next to a river around here is because there's quite a lot of snakes. Best advice that I can give to you about snakes is um, leave them alone. If you see one, avoid it. Generally, if you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. <laughs> that didn't take long, did it? This is only a little guy, but same family, John Cats. Must be teaming with them down here. Oh. Well, made short work of that lobworm, didn't I?
Fou. Catfish, <laughs> the catfish that come up my hook is underneath the rock. Yeah, I'm not prepared to turn the rock over because there could be a snake or something under there. I'm going to wait until he worms his way out and I'll put him back in the water. See, it's just started to rain, just what I didn't want. Again, another cracking channel catfish. See his mouth there. This is how he this is how he finds prey. You can see like the cushing pads. It's like a hoover that thing. That bait had been in the water literally seconds. Don't get any more fish down here. I'm gonna trot a bit through that broken stone there. Because I know there'll be some catfish in there. Is there a snake? Yeah, you don't often get them in the UK. Mosquitoes are becoming a bit of a problem again. It's little tiny fish, look, they're just ripping me to pieces. Let's get rebaited and we'll try that. There is another type, there is another type of snake. This one I'm assuming is a water snake. Because it was just, I just saw like a bit of disturbance under the water. And the snake just looked up. Look, there's one there. He must know that there's the second one. You just see its head poking out, there's like a little branch. And you just see the snake's head poking out. There's two different species of snake. See like the brown, brown and tan checkered one, just in the corner. The other one is olive and black. I think I'm going to move.
try and show you. I'll try and disturb that the olive coloured one. See it there, jump on, duck under the water. See it come back up to the surface. <laughs> Let's get out of here. See the bike developing down there. Well, it's just starting to move away. Lots of little tiny fish. No way. I hope, I hope that in this video it's shown you that uh, no matter where you go, as long as you know your little bit, your basic tactics, same tactics that I use back in the UK, it's like a little travel rod like this, there's nothing stopping you having a lot of fun. Uh, floats cost me 99 cents, the uh, hooks cost me the same, the worms cost me I think over two dollars. You can just find yourself anywhere. This is just literally this is a drainage ditch. It's full of fish. It's full of little critters as well. It's full of crayfish, which is what's taking the break. Oh no. There we go. That is. A little tiny sunfish, a little tiny, possibly long-eared sunfish, could be a dollar sunfish. They are, um, they are a pretty little thing, aren't they? Yeah, all I'm doing is fishing just a very simple float method with a, a tool float with. And then I've caught freshwater drum, I've caught sunfish, I've caught two types of catfish, I've caught an alligator gar. There's another little catfish. All just really simple basic methods. It's getting a bit, <laughs> it's getting a bit sweaty, and the mosquitoes are coming out. So I'm going to wrap it up, and I'm going to go. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope maybe giving you a few few ideas for when you go away and all that. Show me a few nice fish. So have a good one.